My name is Lisa and I've been working on this project with Rena Blake um, called the Floating Flagstone. And the Floating Flagstone comes from the translation of Lixna, which is Lexnava, which is the floating flagstone. And we've been really interested in looking at Lixna and the legacy of Lixna. And I have to be honest, I had no idea of how rich the history was in Lixna. Like it's an amazing place and it's only a couple of miles here down the road. Um, and like, I'm actually flabbergasted by it. So we had done a project in the bog in Lixna and the richness of the bog in Lixna and all of the biodiversity and everything that comes with the bog. And we'd done some work with the convent there. But this project is about looking at um, the, the lost legacy of Lixna and the palace in Lixna. I mean, I don't know if you knew there was a palace in Lixna. I didn't know there was a palace in Lixna. And it's, it's just extraordinary, um, the richness of, of that place. So we went um, on a tour there a couple of weeks ago with uh, Pat Joe Gilbert and Frank Quilter. And I suppose for me, history sometimes is something that's in the past and and architecture um, of the of the past. I suppose it never really came alive for me as much as when I went on a tour with Pat and with Frank. And so they took us around the old palace of Lixna and it's it's just amazing to think that this is here in North Kerry. And it had ballrooms and a courtyard and then they took us up to the Belvedere and they described how there was a bowling green just outside the palace. Um, the, the, the richness of the place is just, you can feel it when you're walking around. And William Petty, who was a prime minister in England, um, was, was living there. And he was living with uh, Lady Arabella, who founded the Magdalen Laundries. And all of these things that I had no idea. And suddenly we're walking through what's a ruin and it's so full of life and so full of history and, and, and I suppose I'm very interested in, in food and sustainability and it was fascinating to me to see how the Fitzmaurice's kind of had so much food you know growing and so much infrastructure to support sustainability and food they had canals that were bringing up you know, food to the the house. They had, they were able to export from these canals. And I suppose it's a different time, you know, now we have roads and now we have motorways, but then you needed to be able to have canals in order to transport things. What's really interesting is that I didn't know this until I visited the North Kerry Museum, where the canals in Lixna um, were part of an infrastructure, obviously to bring transport. But in, in the early 1800s, the British government wanted to grow more hemp and flax so they could build sails and have material for the Navy. And they started looking at the Irish bogs to think about how could they drain the bogs in order to create more hemp and flax. And so there's this amazing map, which is here now, I'll show it to you. And that shows their plans for draining the, the bogs here around Lixna. So I just find that fascinating, you know, I think it's so interesting how this these maps and look at the maps because the maps show how the tides ran up to Lixna and they showed areas back in the 1800s where there was flooding and I think that's so interesting now in terms of climate change and what we need to learn going forward in the future we need to take this knowledge from the past and move forward into the future so the other thing that was amazing about Lixna was they had brilliant orchards and they were able to make their own cider so that Every year they probably had this amazing, you know, festival or gathering where they were they were picking all the apples and, and making their own uh, cider, which I think is, is really cool. It's only, you know, um, on the edge of, edge of the village. They also had a deer park, so they would have eaten a lot of venison. And yeah, they, they probably were pretty self-sufficient in, the, in their food. So when we were thinking about this project, one of the things that I, I read was this short piece from a book by Charles Smith. The tide flows up to the gardens whereby boats of a considerable burden may bring up goods to the bridge near the house. Here are two stone bridges over the brick, the oldest of which was built by Nicholas, the third baron of Lixna, who was the first person that made causeways to this place, the land being naturally wet and marshy. So I can just imagine, you know, these boats coming with all sorts of amazing things like what other imports were there? Like what else did they bring all the way up from different parts of the world, up the Cashin River or up the Brick River and right into the palace in Lixna? Like it's, it's, it's amazing that this is part of our history here in North Kerry. And yet we were so connected probably to all over the world because of our rivers and because of our water. 
so for me, I suppose I'm kind of fascinated by Lixna and I hope that you have areas that you're fascinated by too. And years ago, we worked with the Presentation Sisters and they had um, been given a piece of bog years and years ago so that when the children were coming to the school, they could cut the turf and warm the school. But now the sisters are becoming aware that bogs are really, really important, not only in terms of biodiversity and the amazing biodiversity of bogs, but also as carbon sinks. So the sisters in Lixna have taken the step to preserve their bog um, and to restore their bog to the habitat that it is. And I think that's a beautiful project. I suppose Lixna to me has been um, ahead of the game, you know, it was like sort of the first canals, this amazing palace, this amazing life. And now in the 21st century, there's going to be this um, very state-of-the-art uh, reed bed system for a whole town to process the sewage of the town. So Lixna is going to have a park with four um, little ponds, basically reed ponds, and the dirty water goes in one end and by the time it reaches the fourth pond it will come out as drinking water. And they are the kind of projects that I think are really really exciting for the future and I think there must be something in the water in Lixna because <laughs> for, for centuries all of these kind of very interesting and visionary ideas have been passing through and hopefully we can pass them on to the next generation and you as the young people are the people who are going to make that possible. So draw and be creative and let's create the kind of world we want to see. What I, what I would invite you to do as part of this workshop, because there are really no images of this amazing palace in Nixna, for us to use our imagination and think, how could we draw pictures of this time? So what do you see when I say the word palace? Like this is a, a painting that was done of the palace when it was in ruins, but could we use our imagination to imagine the people that would have gone there, the, here is the picture of the the Dutch oven, you know, that they were cooking the food for the community here and they had two little holding cells where they could keep the food warm. You know, what food were they cooking? What did the cook look like and what were they wearing? How can we imagine the architecture of the time when we don't actually have a photograph or a, an accurate picture? Let's see what you can do. What's really interesting about this project in Lixna is that here were people with vision, you know, they, they had a vision for what they could create and, and they built all these things that were way beyond their time. And for me, it's a calling to us now and especially young people of the next generation to think about how do we build a world for the future? You know, I'm looking here, there's been lots of bees and, and butterflies um, behind me as I'm talking. and. I think for the future in terms of architecture and planning, we need to think about how do we protect the biodiversity here in North Kerry particularly and, and of course around the world, but how do we plan? So even if you have a small place um, or you have a little small garden, can you maybe draw a map of your garden and think about how do you build the Bug Motel? Now, I know sometimes people have a very small garden and it's maybe been used for football or maybe the dog is running around, but if there's a bit of space that you can create a little bit of flowers that the that the bees love and the butterflies love or a bug motel so that the, the bugs can live safely without being disturbed. That really is, is the architecture that I'm interested in for the future, you know. And I'm listening here to the birds flying and creating little spaces where birds and bees and butterflies can find a home in your garden as well. Um, I think that's, that's really what the challenge is. And it's a beautiful sunny evening here and I wish you all the best. Bye, enjoy.